So I've done plenty of videos on Git and Git related tools, but one of the things that I haven't covered is using Git commands directly in your Vim buffer. And when people talk about doing this, they usually bring up a plugin by the name of Vim Fugitive. And I've been asked to cover this plugin for quite a while now, and I didn't think it was gonna be that useful. Then I tried it, then I realized I was completely wrong and should have been using it this entire time. So what Vim Fugitive is, is basically a wrapper around every single Git command, but it's not just a simple wrapper that you could do by just wrapping around this right here. So if you didn't know, in command mode, if you start your command with an exclamation mark, you can just run any sort of shell command from this. So we can say run ls, or we could run git status, uh, put an exclamation mark there, git status, or we could run, say, git log, and that's just gonna run a shell command there. But Vim Fugitive is way more than that, and because of what it does, I would put it at the same level as something like Emmet or VimWiki for me. So things that I consider to be absolutely essential for the way that I actually use Vim. So the main usage of Fugitive is with the git command. So this command right here, which can usually be shortened down just to capital G. Obviously, if you have something else that can be shortened down to capital G, then you're not gonna be able to do that. So what this is gonna let you do is basically run any sort of git command and not just run every single git command, also make it so the command plays really, really nicely inside of Vim. And I think the best way to describe this is to just show you a bit of an example. Let's just go and run that git log command again. So this time I'm just running it as a shell command. And as you can see, we don't get our things like syntax highlighting. And if you're just looking at it like this, it's not entirely clear that you can scroll through this. If the log is longer, yes, you can scroll through it because basically all it's doing is just opening up a pager. But it's not really that obvious and it's not really the best way you could show off this information. So what if instead of doing this, we just dump the information into a split? And that is exactly what Vim Fugitive is going to do. So if I just run G log, as you can see, all of that same information has now just been dumped into a split instead. And we can do all of the normal stuff that we could do in Vim. So we can go and scroll through this. We have our nice syntax highlighting and we have just everything you'd normally have if you'd have the text inside of Vim because that's all it is. It's the text just being dumped into a Vim split. And because of this, it's just much nicer to use. So if you wanted to go and search for a specific commit, you can go and search for that in the regular Vim way. You don't have to do some other tool to do it. It just works really nicely. And the same is gonna be true for something like diff as well. So if I ran git diff just as a regular shell command, it would have all of the same problems that git log would have. So no syntax highlighting. It would be in a pager, so you wouldn't get all the same Vim commands you'd normally have. But if we just run it as a fugitive command, so we just run diff, as you can see, sticks it into a split. We have our syntax highlighting and it's just really clear what's actually going on in here. So running it like this makes it so much easier to actually use these commands, but it's not just these commands that actually got wrapped. So what about commands that you don't really need to see the output of? So things like git add or git restore. So if I go and run those commands actually just as shell commands, you're gonna see something weird happen. So if I just go git add, and then let's just add everything. So even though there's no output here, we still have to press enter to continue. What's the point of that? There's nothing actually being shown here, so why do I need to press enter? Well, Vim Fugitive goes and fixes that. So if I just go and run g add, and let's just add everything again, it just ran it. If there's no output, that's a good thing. So let's also go and run git restore now. So restore dash dash staged, and let's go and restore everything. So no output is another good thing. Let's go and run g add, but this time for a file that doesn't actually exist. So let's add the file t. As you can see, it goes and prints the error message down here. So if it works, you get no output. If there's an error message, it'll tell you what the error message is, which is much nicer than having to press enter after running every single command, even if there's no output being shown. And the same thing is gonna happen with other silent commands as well. So if you ran something like git config, that doesn't actually output anything when you go and change one of the settings. So there's no point having to force you to press enter, even though nothing's actually being shown on the screen. So running that inside of Vim Fugitive is just gonna be a little bit easier. So what about doing things like commits and rebases? So let's just go and add some files. So g add, and we'll just add everything. 
and now this time let's try to run the shell command git commit and this shell command straight up doesn't work so just running git commit as you can see it doesn't have any idea what to do because it can't actually open the editor inside of vim so instead of doing that let's try running g commit this time this time it just opens up a split and you can do your commit message down here so let's just say this is a commit and go and save and quit this. This is a commit, one file change, three deletions. Okay, cool. And let's just run glog again. And as you can see, this is a commit. So that has actually gone and worked perfectly fine. So this same behavior is gonna happen if you need to do something like commit a merge. Basically anything that's gonna open up an editor is going to open up a split inside of Vim. Now I can't think of any other commands off the top of my head, but anything where you need to open up an editor, it's just going to do that split method, which honestly is so much easier than the alternative. So what I was doing before I found Vim Fugitive is I would have a separate terminal open, I would run git commit in that, do the commit message there, and then go back to my main Vim window, which works, but it's so much slower than just doing it in the window that you're currently in, especially if you accidentally go and close that other terminal. Then when you need to commit something, you need to open up the terminal, run git commit, do all the other steps. But with this method, all you have to do is just use the terminal you currently have, which I think is much, much more convenient. So there's also a wrapper around merge tool and diff tool. So I've never actually used these, but basically they're tools that help you do merges and diffs basically. So as we can see, because I just did a commit, there's nothing to actually merge here. But if I had a separate branch with changes on it, it would show all of the changes that I need to deal with before I can actually do the merge. And then diff tool is basically gonna show the same thing. It's just gonna show the diffs. Now, not every single git command is nicely wrapped by Fugitive. There's one command you're gonna come across very, very quickly that I'm not sure why it's not wrapped, but it's not that big of a deal. So if I just run the shell command, git status. As you can see, it basically just shows the git status, no color or anything like that, just shows the git status in this little pop-up window. But if I go and run g status, basically that's going to show the exact same thing. Now, I don't know why it's not being put in a separate buffer like things like git log and git differ. I don't know why it's not like that, but it's not really that big of a deal. I guess Maybe it's because you probably don't need to see the git status for that long. That could probably be it, but besides that, I can't think of a reason why it's actually being shown like this. One thing I didn't mention earlier is all of the git commands will let you do autofilling. So let's say we wanted to do, I don't know, restore. So if I just try to tab complete this, as you can see, it actually shows all of the git commands. So restore's not showing up, let's try it now. So restore, there we go dash dash and then we can see all of the options for it so let's do dash dash st and there we go auto fills to staged so you don't have to go and remember every single option it will let you do tab completion if it didn't do tab completion it would be really really annoying to use one thing i have been neglecting to show you this entire time is what happens if we just run the g command but don't pass any arguments into it so we've been running things like g add g commit g status but what happens if we just run g well what that's going to be is basically sort of a miniature git status now this might be the reason why git status isn't wrapped properly just because this window exists here but it would be nice to see git status also get wrapped now this isn't just a git status window so if i go and run g question mark it's going to bring up all of the key mappings now, basically, you can go and do things like stage files, unstage files, discard changes, and basically, it's just a miniature Git interface built into Vim. Now, I'm not a big fan of using this interface. I'd much rather go and do stuff with the regular Git commands, but if you want to do that, then go have a look at all of these bindings. There is, what, 300 lines of bindings, so come check this out. I'm not going to go into it in this video just because I haven't actually bothered to use it myself, but you can even do things like create commits in here. So come have a look at this if it's something that sounds interesting to you. So there's actually some other commands we can use with Vim Fugitive as well. So it's not just the G command. We also have a couple of others. So the first one we have is G edit or G split, which is either going to replace the current buffer or open up a new split with an older or a newer version of the repo. So if I go and run G split, 
and I run it with head tilde one. What this is gonna do is open up a version of the repo from one commit ago and open that up in a split. So as we can see, we have all of the files that exist in the repo. And basically if I go and select one of these files, it's gonna show me the changes between the two versions. So that's nice and all, but let's say instead we wanted to open up a specific file. So if I go and G, uh, if I go and G split, we'll go again and go head tilde one and then say we want to open up the older version of the current file. As you can see, this is what this current file looked like one commit ago. So I don't really think this is that useful, but if you need to access older files, then this is one way that you can go about doing that. And it won't go and mess with what you have in your current branch. So another one we can do is G diff split, which is basically gonna open up a split for the current file and diff it between what's available in the working tree and the staged version. So if I just go and run a G diff split, as you're gonna see, this line right here is the only line that has been modified. And if we wanna go back to the file, all we have to do is just quit out of this and it will take you back. Another one we have is G read. Now G read, basically what that's gonna do is git checkout for a specific file. So let's say we wanted to gread for the current file, for example. And what that's gonna do is basically check out the current file from the Git repo. So as you saw, that line has now gone back to being removed. And when you actually run this, it's not actually going and modifying your Git repo. All it's doing is checking out the file into this current buffer. So if I just go and undo this, as you can see, that reverts the changes without actually modifying the Git repo. All it's doing is opening it up temporarily in your Vim buffer. Nothing actually changes until you go and actually save the file, which is actually nice to see. Another one you might want to use is gwrite, which is going to basically write to the working tree and the index versions of a file. Now, I don't ever find myself actually using this. I just use the regular git commands to do stuff. But if you need to modify both the working tree and the index version of the file at the same time, just run this command right here. So gwrite. And the rest of them, I'm kind of gonna run through because they're all pretty straightforward what they do. So we have ggrep, which will run git grep. We have glgrep, which will run git lgrep. We have gmove, which will run git mv, but it would be quicker to just run gmv. I don't know why gmove actually exists, but if you wanna use gmove, then go ahead and use gmove. Another one we have is grename. This one actually is kind of useful. Basically, it's gonna work very similar to mv, but the name is going to be relative to the current directory rather than relative to your entire file system. So if you wanna rename something, but you don't wanna move it anywhere, grename might be an easier way to do it. Then we have gdelete, which is basically going to run git rm. Once again, it would be easier just to run capital G rm. I don't know why that exists, but it does exist. So when you go and delete a file like this, it deletes the file and also deletes it from the buffer. G remove. So if we just run G remove instead of G delete, what that's going to do is keep the file in the buffer, but it will actually go and delete the actual file. And the last one we have is G browse. So what G browse is gonna do is basically try to open up the remote. So in this case, it's gonna try to open up GitHub, but I don't actually have the handler installed to handle GitHub. So there's a couple of handlers that exist for things like GitHub, GitLab, other things that exist to store Git repos. And if you wanna actually use gbrowse, you're also going to need to install one of those plugins as well. I believe all the plugins are made by the same guy who actually made Vim Fugitive, which is nice to see. It's not like he actually had to go and do that. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you about what Vim Fugitive can actually do. Now, obviously I could show you what every single Git command does, but as I said, it's a wrapper around everything. So. Once I've showed you the basic concepts, I think you can kind of expand those out to all of the other commands. So I didn't show you what say git config did, but you know that when you run git config, it doesn't print anything to your terminal. So it's probably going to run the same way that add does. And I didn't show you how cherry pick works, but there are things that I ran that are like cherry pick with their output. So you should be able to work out what cherry pick is gonna do inside of Fugitive. And same with all of the other commands. I didn't show you most of them, but I did show you every single category for a command handling that does exist inside of Fugitive. So if you wanna go and install it for yourself, it's made by tpope because all of the awesome plugins are made by tpope. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to use gbrowse, 
then there's a couple of plugins that do exist that you can use alongside of Vim Fugitive to actually make the handling work. So we have GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, Giddy, I have no idea what that is, Pagur, Pagur, I don't know how to say that, and Fabricator. What about SourceForge? I guess no one uses SourceForge, so it's probably fine to actually be missing. Anyway, if you want to use GBrowse, go download one of these plugins and use it alongside Vim Fugitive and then you're going to actually be able to use that command. This plugin is such a simple idea, that's why this ended up being a pretty short video, but it is executed so well. All it needed to be was a wrapper around git commands, it didn't need to do anything that fancy, all it needed to do was just make them work nice inside of Vim. And it does that perfectly. So I'm going to be using this very frequently going forward, and I would highly recommend this to anyone who wants a better way to work with git when they're actually using Vim. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video, but before I go, I wanted to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Craig, Nathan, Andrew Montezar, Corbinian, P.E. Rowe, Tony Donald, John Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go support the channel, there'll be some links down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll a small kickback for it. Also, go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library, YouTube, and a bunch of other platforms as well, and the audio version is available Anywhere you listen to audio podcasts. Also, go check out this channel if you're watching it on YouTube, on Library, BitTube, and BitChute. And remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and dingle the bell icon down below as well. And if you like the rambly content, be sure to go check out my blog on Minds and Read.Cash. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>